Greetings, Tubidors, and welcome back to my little channel, Made in Wales and Unaffected by the Recent Floods. Thank goodness. So, where are we today? I'll tell you. Antarctica. UFOs. Aliens. Crashed UFOs. Crashed UFOs with aliens in them. All sounds a bit exciting, doesn't it? Well, the reason for this is that on the weekend just gone, um, I was watching the weekly live roundtable discussion from The Shills. Now, if you've not seen The Shill Show, go and have a look. Great fun, great guests. Link in the description below. Anyway, a video that was discussed on the show featured a story that I've been aware of for some time um, concerning an alleged UFO crash in Antarctica. Now, we're going to drift off at a bit of a tangent here for a minute or two, but do bear with me. Now, I own and have read literally hundreds of books on the UFO subject. Um, I was an investigative member of Bufora, British UFO um, Research Association, and I was a subscription member of MUFON, the Mutual UFO Network, for many years. So, what does all this reading and membership and study of cases caused me to conclude. Um, does alien life exist? Simple answer, yes, without any doubt whatsoever. Considering the size of the universe, it can't not have developed elsewhere. And to believe that we're the only ones is either utter conceit or, to be honest, downright idiocy. We're, we're just not that special to be unique in the universe. Um, Think of it this way. There are hundreds of billions of planets in this galaxy alone. And by a simple law of averages, some will have developed life. Now, some of those will have developed intelligent life. And some of those are likely to be vastly in advance of us. Uh, for example, when I was studying astronomy at college in late 1990s, um, we briefly played about with something called the Drake Equation. Now, if you're not familiar with it, the Drake Equation was developed by Dr. Frank Drake back in 1961 as a means of uh, stimulating scientific discussion um, amongst the delegates of the first ever meeting of the SETI Foundation. Um, SETI is a scientific organization and SETI stands for the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. Um, the result, results gained by using the equation, they're not meant to be taken as an absolute figure, but as an estimate of potential as to how many advanced civilizations there might be in the galaxy at any one time. Um, to give you a better idea of how this works, we'll have a look at the Drake equation. Because So this is a Drake equation calculator that you can find online. So let's put in the parameters, see the result we get. Number of stars that are born in the Milky Way each year. Well, that's estimated to be about three solar masses worth every year. Percentage of these stars that have solar systems of planets. Well, with the Kepler telescope, some estimates go as high as 100%. Um, pretty much every star they've looked at so far and studied with the Kepler telescope has imaged um, or at least detected planets of some description. Let's be conservative. Let's say it's 50% of stars have planets. Average number of Earth-like planets. Again, that's estimated to be perhaps as high as 60%. Let's be conservative. Let's say it's 20%. Percentage of those planets on which life actually forms. Now, this is probably the most difficult part of the equation. We've only got one planet to gauge from, and that's our own. But let's say it's 0.01%. Um, percentage of life-bearing planets where intelligence evolves. Let's say it's 0.5%. Percentage of intelligent species that produce interstellar radio communications. Again, let's be conservative. Let's say half a percent. The average lifetime of a communicating civilization in years. Within the Drake equation, it's generally accepted that it's about 10,000 years. So there we go. The number of civilizations we might be able to communicate with in this galaxy at this time is 75,000. 
<laughs> that's a quite a large potentially large number of advanced civilizations living in this galaxy at the present time um so is there any evidence whatsoever that we have had alien technology visit our little planet possibly maybe there there are some seriously compelling stories um, away from the overhyped nonsense like you know the roswell crash and um, one that's is actually still emerging today in the UFO community, the Penturch incident, which is alleged to have taken place not that far from where I used to live um, down in Pont de Prith. Um, I happen to think the Penturch incident is absolute nonsense. There was a large military manoeuvre going on um, on the outskirts of Cardiff at the time. That's what people saw. But of course, it gets hyped up and pushed by these you know, want to be true believers and gets blown out of all proportion. But as far as other civilizations sending things here to have a look, think about this. What are we doing in space technology right now? We are sending out probes into the solar system. We're sending, you know, rovers to Mars. Um, the Cassini Huygens mission had a look at uh, Venus and then it came back and had a look at Earth and then went on to have a look at the uh, Mazursky asteroid um, before the Huygens probe eventually landed on Titan um, whilst Cassini went on to take some of the most spectacular photographs of Saturn that, or they are the most spectacular photographs of Saturn that we've ever seen. Um, the New Horizon mission, that's gone off and it's mapped Pluto and is now following in the footsteps uh, of its grandparents, uh, Voyagers 1, or, 1 and 2, heading off towards the Oort cloud way, way, way out. Eventually, it'll go off into interstellar space and probably be gone forever. Um, although in 300 years' time, we'll probably have the technology to go out, catch up with it and bring it back and stick it in a museum. Um, and let, let's not forget, you know, the Viking missions, the Mariner missions, the Deep Impact, Pioneer missions. We're out there. You know, we are exploring space remotely. It's far easier and it's far cheaper to do it that way than try and develop the technology to send people out there. So if a race had the tech to send probes, not just billions of miles into space like we do, but thousands of light years, then that's what they'd be doing. That's what we'd be doing if we had the technology. Now, the problem with the UFO field is the true believers. Um, they, they very much like flat earthers in their mindset. They don't have any proof, so their faith supports them. Um, I've met people, genuinely I have met people, who will look at a photograph of a fuzzy white light in the extreme distance and claim with absolute conviction that it's a, a D-class reconnaissance vessel from the Orion system. Um, as to prove it, and they'll answer along the lines of, you know, oh, it's obvious. They've been coming here for thousands of years. Ask them how they know this. And the stock response is generally something along, along the lines of, you wouldn't understand. Which brings us back to the subject of the video that was on the Shill Show. Now, the video was posted by a site calling itself, calling itself Third Phase of Moon, which is all one word. Now, the video is about 10 minutes long. You'll only need one minute to get the general idea absolutely david you're you're uh, over the past few days you've just been sending me some photos and he just sent me some new ones how about we just get to this uh incredible image that i just saw with while you're just speaking within a few seconds is the antarctica oh the of, tanks of what looks to be like four tanks surrounding yeah. some kind of crashed ufo you could kind of see the skid marks of the this crash or i'm not exactly yes, sure can. what's going on it's an incredible i don't know picture. man i took the i took the pictures quick because as i was looking at you uh google google is doing an update on their uh google earth clickbait nothing more nothing less it's just clickbait this channel, Third Phase of Moon, is actually renowned for the monumental amount of nonsense that anyone can find on that particular channel. They're even considered as crap peddlers by some pretty hardcore conspiracists. But they know that there are still an astounding number of people who will suck this crap up like it comes with a, you know, a, a solid gold certificate of authenticity. Um, so what they've done is 
they've looked at a picture, they found some features in Antarctica that they know their loyal followers won't research for themselves, which will cause those mindless sheep to completely believe um, they can only be looking at one thing, you know, some tanks taking a look at a crashed UFO or possibly guarding the crashed UFO. Um, UFO, by the way, stands for unidentified flying object. It's a, it's a pretty descriptive term, but as far as they're concerned, it's not unidentified, it's a fully identified crashed alien ship. So, how many of you fancy a trip to Antarctica? Me too, but it costs thousands. Fortunately, that video showed us the name Wiley Field Road, which just happens to be the one and only road running in and out of McMurdo Antarctic Base. Now, a quick snuffle around Google Earth, and we can easily find the location of the alleged crash site. So, let's have a look. So, here we are, good old Google Earth. Now, fortunately, that map showed us that we need to go somewhere called Wiley Feed Field Road in Antarctica. Let's go and take a look down Wiley Field Road. And there we are, right down in the South Pole, right on Wiley Field Road. Now, if we back over here a bit, what we can see is that it's about sort of two and a half miles to the northeast of McMurdo Base. There's McMurdo Base. It's got the largest population of any inhabited town, if you want to call it a town, um, in, the, in Antarctica. It's a science station. It's filled with climate scientists and environmental scientists. You know, they're monitoring temperature and climate. They're looking at... Um, ice melt and all sorts of other environmental factors now happens that i know that right here is the magical trench where that ship is supposed to have crashed now it looks a lot different today i know still clearly visible um if there had been an alien crash you'd think that they would have covered that up fortunately for us google maps or google earth has this facility and it allows you to track back over previous images that have been used on this part of Antarctica. Now, no tanks down here. Oh, but what are these things over here? Well, they're probably some sort of mobile science stations, probably modular ones. We'll come to that in a second. Thing is, if there had been a crashed alien ship here, then you'd think that they would have filled this trench in to, uh, to cover up the evidence. Now, the photograph that we're talking about today. He was taken back in 2011, I believe. Uh, so let's have a quick look around. There we have it. That is what Antarctica looked like on March 5th, 2011. Here we can see those three things that certain fringe nutcases have labeled as tanks. And there is the UFO. If they had come to guard it, then you, you'd think they'd have strategically placed themselves around it, wouldn't you? And possibly put a tarpaulin over it to stop, you know, the spying eyes of satellites. But let's presume then that this alien ship crashed and these tanks have turned up to take a look at it. Let's go back a bit. 24th of February. Oh, well, it obviously crashed before the 24th of February. But let's go back to 30th of January 2010. Now, you can see that the trench is most certainly there, but the tanks are not, and neither is the crashed alien spaceship. So, are we supposed to think then that the ship came flying in from the northwest and being unwilling or at least reluctant to disturb the pristine tundra of the frozen Antarctic, it decided to land in a trench that had already been dug. I don't think so. When we come forward to the 22nd of December of the same year, they're not there anymore. I know, winds me right up. All we can say with any certainty is that it wasn't an alien ship. It's far more likely to be something to do with the good people down here at McMurdo, a bunch of scientists have gone up there, stayed there for a while, took some readings, read a bit of data, made a bit of research, and then probably it went back to McMurdo to catch the boat home um, to whatever marginally warmer part of the planet they live on. 
we can safely presume that this is either an ice crevasse or some kind of excavated trench for purposes unknown. The four structures that sat there in 2007, they're certainly not tanks. Um, the most common tank in the US Army is the M1 Abrams, Abrams tank. Um, and whatever those things are, they're three times the size of an Abrams. Um, they're almost certainly mobile science stations. Um, these, these are modular stations used by the British Antarctic Survey. Now, this footage was taken on the Brunt Ice Shelf, which is over 2,000 miles away from McMurdo, but it shows the mobile modular science stations that are now being used all over Antarctica. Um, these are very likely to be the things that are, or something similar to these, that have been put in a row doing whatever science they're doing, certainly not looking after a crashed UFO. Now, it's because of these true-believing Space Brother types that videos like this and the whole subject of UFOs is so ripe for ridicule. Um, there are strange things seen in the sky. They usually misidentifications of common, very mundane things. But there are a small percentage that are inex inexplicable. Um, they are seen by highly credible civilians as well as skilled military observers um, all around the world. Um, they've been filmed from military gun cameras aboard airplanes um, performing seemingly impossible manoeuvres. Um, they've accelerated away at speeds far in excess of anything that our present technology is capable of. But instead of thinking logically about it and asking, um, is this some natural, possibly meteorological phenomena or some hyper-advanced military experimental craft, or even pushing it to the edge and saying, you know, that could be something alien because we have nothing we know of that could do that. Instead of that, they build a whole fiction around them with no proof whatsoever that makes serious-minded investigators look like they belong to a lunatic fringe. And it makes the rest of society simply dismiss those logical, open-minded people as fringe nutters completely unworthy of any regard whatsoever. It really does get my back up. So, before I get too angry and explode emotionally, um, I'm going to draw to a conclusion. If you've made it this far, thank you very much for watching. If you're subscribed, then I already love you to bits. If you're not, please do consider clicking that subscribe button, hit the bell notification, and when I post my next video, lovely YouTube will send you an email on my behalf announcing that it's been dropped. So, until next time, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Be nice to each other. Be well. Until next time, Heulwaur.